On this episode, we'll be talking VR. I'm your host, Gary B. Twelve seconds later. So I just spent the last eight hours living, breathing, and experiencing VR. And you're probably wondering, why? Well, here's why. Recently, Oculus came out with new software for their Oculus Rift headset. They call it the Oculus Dash. They believe that the Dash will eventually replace screens and computer monitors. They believe that the Dash will change the way that humans work, play, and connect. So I decided that I'd be one of the first to see if the current hardware and software can live up to this mission. But first, since we're doing a tech review, let's break this topic down. So what exactly is virtual reality? VR is a computer-generated artificial 3D simulation that users interact with using electronic equipment. Now in order to best test this technology, I ended up using three different headsets because I wanted to be sure that I stayed in VR for an entire eight hours. Oculus Rift is the high end and comes with a pretty high price tag. You'll spend anywhere from about $400 to $800 on the headset alone. Then the touch accessory runs about an additional $199. You'll need a rig that will support the software, which will run you at least another $1,000. The HTC Vive headset and bundle is similarly priced. Both of these systems are what I call tethered systems, so they're not mobile. So I also picked up a very inexpensive additional third headset. It's called the Dream Vision. It's basically a, a game and video viewing headset. These untethered headsets won't cost you a lot at all, but they can't do nearly as much as the Vibe and the Rift. Generally, you can pick one up from 10 to $50. And the mobile headsets are powered by your mobile phone. So it's pretty simple how it works. You simply take your device, pop it in here, click it in place, and you're ready to go. They're really simple, and you can use them anywhere, anytime, and with any device. And so here's what my night of VR looked like. First, I wanted to test the Oculus Dash's thesis that VR will change the way that we work play and connect. So I went ahead and I launched the Dash and began working for a few hours. I wrote an article for Medium that I will be publishing this week while using the Dash. But then I started to get really fatigued. My head was a little achy and my eyes, they hurt from focusing so intensely. So I did what I usually do. I got up and got some exercise in. I hopped on the treadmill with the mobile dream vision and I knocked out a crisp six miles. And next I decided to do some simulation games. So I went back to the tethered headsets.
For me, I enjoyed the simulations in the gaming and VR more than I did doing the regular work stuff. It seemed more natural. I ended up switching back between work, play, and connecting the entire time. I'm not sure how productive I really was, but I was kind of just getting used to the whole experience. After eight hours, I was totally fried. So here's the positives of VR. It's great for technical training, like vocational purposes of learning, to do something that requires a technical skill. For instance, there are how-to style tutorials for doing jobs in the construction industry. I even tried a simulator where you learn to cut down trees safely around power lines and hazards. And when it comes to games, VR is fantastic because you're right in the experience. Games like GTA and COD are really popular because of the connections that we make with other players, because there's so many people playing it around the world. The headset makes the connections even better, and you actually feel like you're there with the other players in a community. Now, unfortunately, there are also some negatives. Most importantly, I question whether we're built for full-time VR use. My eyes, they were killing me after the eight-hour VR binge. I felt like I had a concussion. I also couldn't sleep after the virtual experience. This brings me to the big question. This brings me to the big question. If we use it for longer periods of time, will we build up our endurance for VR or will we have VR actually do harm to us physically and mentally? And now for my final analysis. I read some articles the other day about schools in Singapore and Great Britain that are using VR very seriously in social studies classroom. Here's a clip from a World War I simulation used in Great Britain. What I'm doing here is I'm walking down the German front line. So what you're looking at, away to your right there, is no man's land. They've been waiting their entire military career for this very moment. These schools are using mobile VR, which is less expensive and is powered by individual devices. An example would be the Dream Vision. The devices can hop on one platform so they will all be synced so that all the students experience the VR experience together. The other feature of both trials is that the learning modules that students are doing in VR is very short in duration. It's like five to 10 minute micro learning lessons. So if you're going to do VR for now, my advice is to stay away from doing the whole workday experience like I've tried out. Stick with shorter bursts and you don't have to spend a ton of time to enjoy the benefits of VR. A simple $20 headset and an hour here and there can give you a really good taste of the experience. I I believe that in 10 years VR will be everywhere. It has a ton of potential. It just needs some time for, for experimentation and to figure out what works best. Then we need to start creating the content that's necessary for it to really benefit us all. Thanks for watching. A few quick shout outs before I go. Peyton helped me to capture a lot of this vlog. She's awesome. And a student of mine, Rocco, he did a lot to make this happen as well.